final speaker for uh, the architecture session today. He says, jump into, oh, it's Marco from Kong will be with us. He's joining the stage now. Hey, Marco, great to see okay. you. Good to see you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yep. Um, always great to have Kong be presenting it, uh, at, at API days. A um, uh, lot of love in the community for all of the things you, you're all building there. Thank you, Mark. Okay, great. Looks like you're up and running with your deck, so I'll jump off and let you get into it. Thanks. Thank you, Mark, and hello, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about connectivity, and we're going to be analyzing the evolution of certain patterns that we've been using up until now. For example, the API gateway pattern. Um, my name is Marco Palladino, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Kong. Kong is a company that uh, provides technologies and platforms for building our connectivity, either at the edge, inside our organization, as well as service mesh. And so today we're going to be looking at how all of these has evolved over the past few years and how we can build it ourselves. We live in a digital world. And that's, you know, that's the case even more so during the current world situation. Everything runs on the wire. And if there is any business today that hasn't, that is not digital yet, uh, will not really be around for much longer if we don't, if they don't indeed digitalize. And at the same time, as we pursue our transformation and digitalization, um, of our businesses, our customers won't forgive us for poor and broken experiences. In the digital world, it is important to be reliable. reliable. Reliability is a requirement. So in order to be more reliable, in order to deploy fixes in a faster way, in order to build features in a faster way, in order to be highly available, we decouple and we distribute our applications. And decoupling and distributing our applications, running them across different regions, making our code bases simpler, smaller, creates more and more connectivity. We are transitioning away from, from the CPU to the network. In a large code base, different resources can be consumed uh, by other resources using uh, code, using function calls. But in a distributed environment, those function calls are being replaced by service calls over the network. And this is by design. As our teams get more specialized, they decouple and distribute, distribute their software, we also introduce more and more connectivity so that all of these different services can talk to each other. And in, in this new era of software, really, connectivity is the backbone. When we're talking about the evolution of existing patterns like API gateways, really, we must talk about the evolution of connectivity within our systems, particularly uh, edge and internal connectivity across our application. Every time a new team creates any new application, they create connectivity. And this connectivity, it's not just your typical RESTful API, but it can be anything. Anything that allows us to either make or receive a request over the network. It can be gRPC, it can be GraphQL, it can be Kafka. Our teams are going to be using whatever protocol, whatever transport even, um, it's, it's better suited for the use case they're building. And we, the architects, must provide reliable and safe connectivity regardless of what technology the teams decide to use. We know that our teams are going to be creating applications that require edge connectivity. For example, when we want to enable an ecosystem of partners to consume our applications, or maybe mobile apps, or maybe an external developer community. We know that we're going to be having connectivity inside of the organization when different teams want to uh, enable their applications to talk to each other. 
And we know that the more we decouple our large monolithic applications into microservices, we're going to be having more and more connectivity within the applications themselves across all the services that make up the final application. And we know that we're going to be doing this across a different variety of architectural architectures that our teams are going to be choosing and across a different variety of platforms where we're going to be deploying our applications. And some of them are going to be on Kubernetes. Some of them are going to be on VMs. Some teams are going to be using one cloud or another cloud. And we, the architects, must support all of these connectivity use cases across all the architectures the teams are creating, across all the platforms the organization is using today to deploy the software. Now, when it comes to uh, these three major connectivity use cases, uh, we do have different technology answers to each one of them. We can use an Edge API gateway for Edge connectivity. We can use an internal API gateway to offer APIs to other teams. And we can use service meshes to create reliable, secure, and observable connectivity within the boundaries of an application. And if we, if we look um, at each one of these different use cases, we can identify more specifically when they should be used and when not. Um, for an Edge API gateway, uh, we're going to be obviously using this whenever we want to enable our APIs to be consumed externally out from outside the organization's network. It can be a mobile app, can be partners, can be customers using our APIs. It can be a developer community, can be IoT, can be devices, can be any external client. And, and the goal really is to create an abstraction layer to offer API as a product. You know, we've been seeing lots of API first companies coming out in the past few years. Think of Twilio, think of Stripe. APIs themselves can be a product. And like any other product, we must be able to have a life cycle. We must be able to create it, to create new versions, to decommission the old versions, uh, to design them, to test them, to monitor them, and so on and so forth. And so we can use an API gateway to offer APIs as a product and then being able to control the entire API life cycle. Uh, we can offer the API to third parties. We can uh, you know, govern, govern how the users are consuming and, and provisioning the keys or your authentication credentials to use the API. Now, the nice thing about this pattern is that it really lives in its own architectural silo, if you wish. Uh, there is no dependency that either the API or the clients consuming the API have to install to consume, to make these connections happen. Um, the, the gateway, it is um, quite hands-on as, as a technology when it comes to when it comes to connectivity, as long as, of course, the requests are going through the gateway itself, the gateway will be happy with it and work. That's not the case with service mesh, and we're going to be exploring that in a second. Internal API gateways are very similar as Edge API gateways, but unlike Edge API gateways, this is about internal connectivity. Teams creating different applications, different lines of, of businesses, wanting to cooperate with their, their APIs, they're going to be using an internal API gateway to provide the same governance and lifecycle that they are providing at the edge, but within the organization. Um, and this also creates an abstraction layer, by the way, in case our APIs are changing under the hood, we can keep an abstraction layer on the gateway that doesn't break those clients and give the clients gives the clients more time to update to the new version. And likewise, the Edge API gateway, an internal API gateway also leave, lives on its own architectural layer um, and does not require any particular dependencies uh, on the APIs or the clients as long as the request goes through the gateway. And then finally, as we transition our monolithic applications into, into service mesh, we're going to be having more and more traffic within the applications themselves. And we want to make sure that as we create those services and, and dependencies, we can reliably secure them, connect them, discover them, observe them at L4 and L7. So this is more closer to uh, the network, if you wish. It's, it has less to do with offering an API as a product and more to do with I'm making a request and I need to make sure that the request, it is going to be successful. It's going to be secure and observable regardless if the API is a product or not. 
Um, and, and unlike the API gateway, a service mesh has a little bit um, a more intense deployment pattern because we must deploy a data plane proxy next to each instance of every service that we have so that we can, so that uh, every outgoing request is being intercepted by the proxy and every incoming request is being inter intercepted by the same data plane proxy, which at that point acts as a reverse proxy. Now, when it comes to service mesh, many, I think the industry has done a very poor job into explaining this very simple fact. Service mesh is always being presented as yet another thing that we have to do in our systems. But service mesh is a chance for us to do less things in our organization when it comes to making those requests, securing them, observing them. All of these func functions are required and today they're being developed independently by the application teams. So the application teams, instead of focusing 100% on building their applications and focusing on the customers, the users, they're also managing the network whenever they make a request to another service. Whereas this should come as part of the underlying infrastructure provisioning. And so really service mesh, it is something that gives us a chance to do less when it comes to building our applications and control how that is being done without having fragmentation, which in turn will improve reliability, which as we said, it is a must have in any modern digital business. We must be reliable. Um, and we're going to be double clicking on service mesh in just a little bit. Now, these, is the future of our connectivity patterns. Uh, when it comes to APIs, this also is the future of API gateways, a very well integrated component of our connectivity stack with the service mesh. The gateway doesn't live under a rock anymore. It's a puzzle of this greater picture. Um, we can create a service overlay with service mesh across any zone, any cluster, any data center, any application, to connect and discover and protect and secure and observe our service connectivity at L4 and L7 within the applications. And we can use the gateway as an ingress or egress to that mesh to offer those APIs as a product, either inside of the organization via an internal API gateway or at the edge via an edge API gateway. Service mesh doesn't work at the edge with external clients as a pattern, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work because in order for service mesh to run, we must have a sidecar running alongside every service. But in certain instances, that's not possible. It's not possible, for example, in mobile applications, and it's not possible if we want to enable third parties to create applications that consume our APIs, which is 99.9% .9 of the use cases of an Edge API gateway. Um, we can't because we cannot control how they are deploying their software. We cannot tell them to run a sidecar next to their software. And even if we could, we don't want their sidecar to talk to our control plane, which is a very sensitive component running in, in, a, in our internal network that nothing from the outside should ever get access to. So at the edge, service mesh is not applicable really. Whereas inside of the organization, some organizations, they all start with a very large service mesh for all the applications that soon becomes into a big mess because it requires too much coordination among the teams and it provides not much compartmentalization if something goes wrong. And so they decide to create multiple virtual meshes. Each one of them can now talk through a gateway when it's being exposed internally to another team. And because this is the bread and butter of what Kong does, of course, um, you know, with Kong, we, we provide a full stack connectivity platform that goes from API gateway to service mesh using leading open source projects like Kong Gateway and, uh, and Kuma. Kuma has been actually donated to the CNCF Foundation. Um, it's vendor neutral and it's built on top of Envoy Proxy. And these two products work together very well with each other so that uh, this entire connectivity stack just comes uh, out of the box. Uh, we, there is nothing we have to glue together. There is nothing we have to figure out ourselves. The entire experience is being taken care of. We create a service overlay with the mesh, with as many meshes as we want on both VMs and Kubernetes or a hybrid, including every cloud 
as well as we can then integrate with the gateway technology to expose requests at the edge or internally. Um, so I, I just want to quickly dive uh, deeper into uh, service mesh before I wrap my presentation up. Uh, this is a typical deployment of an API gateway. An API gateway lives on its own pattern, on its own architectural, uh, I'm sorry, on its own architectural layer. Um, whereas with service mesh, you know, we have to have these proxies next to each instance. But let's understand why that is the case. So if we do have a service uh, and we want to make a request to another service, without service mesh, we, the teams, have to build um, retries, timeouts, logging, tracing, routing, and so on and so forth, and security within each one of these different services. You can imagine how different teams creating different services are going to be creating the same functionality over and over again when it comes to managing the network. So what if we can exclude, we can extract these network management capabilities outside of the services that we're building so that we can put them in a separate binary and we can reuse the same binary over and over again whenever our services make or receive a request over the network. Now, if this is a separate binary, we don't have to build it every time from scratch in every service. And even if you're using different programming languages in our services, this binary, it's portable. Thankfully, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to build this ourselves, but we can use technologies that have already done this for us, like, uh, for example, Envoy Proxy. Now, if we do have this binary uh, that does all these uh, service connectivity, you know, management capabilities for us, you know, running uh, alongside our service, we also want to make sure that uh, this uh, component runs on the same underlying host or virtual machine or pod as our services, because we want to make sure that the latency between the service and this uh, uh, runtime, it is as small as possible. Therefore, we want these services, these uh, uh, two different processes to run on the same underlying host or pod. Um, and because we want to enable end-to-end -end security, end-to-end -end tracing, end-to-end -end metrics, we also want to be running this on the other side whenever we receive our requests from another service so that the contact points of our requests is not the services themselves, it is these third party binary that does this network management for us and acts as a proxy for outgoing requests and as a reverse proxy for incoming requests. Like I said, we don't have to build this ourselves. Thankfully, we can use something that already exists like Envoy proxy, and we can run this alongside each service that we have running. Now, of course, because we're going to be having lots of these running around, we must have a control plane, a source of truth that is going to be uh, uh, that is going to be used to configure how the networking policies should be working across our services. Um, and, and thankfully, we don't have to build the control plane part either, uh, but we can use something like, like Kuma. And the control plane communicates with the proxies only, whereas the proxies are going to be on the execution path of our API requests on L4 and L7, not just RESTful APIs, but anything that listens over TCP and potentially on UDP, depending on what technology you're using. Um, and for this, you can check out Kuma. It's a CNCF project that really simplifies how service meshes run with a first-class native support of VMs and Kubernetes, including multi-zone clusters running acro across multiple platforms, multiple Kubernetes clusters, multiple zones, including hybrid of virtual machines and Kubernetes. We have done lots of innovation with the community to make sure that this could be the simplest service mesh, it could support all the environments and provide out of the box policies that we can use for zero trust security, for observability, for discovery and so on and so forth. So let's wrap this up. Uh, today, we looked at uh, this new era of connectivity and of software really. We are distributing and decoupling our software to digitalize faster, to provide a better reliable experience. Reliability, it is a must for any digital experience. It doesn't matter how many products or applications we create. If they're not reliable, our customers won't use them. They will use our competitors' products, which work better. Uh, and so we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that we can provide a reliable experience ourselves so that we can, we can avoid being disrupted by competition. 
And we looked at the evolution of the API gateway pattern and how that works with another pattern called the service mesh to provide this full stack end-to-end -end connectivity um, uh, you know, infrastructure that goes all the way from edge to mesh and across different applications within our organization. If you have any more questions, you can ask them on the chat, uh, as well as you can, you can, um, you know, get in touch with with me or with Kong at konghq.com. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thanks, Marco. Sorry, it takes a second for it to jump back on. Um, the we'll, I'll just check if we've got any questions. Uh, for any any questions for Marco? I mean, there were there was a ton of stuff in there, and it, it was a really great walkthrough. The um, but a lot to think about there, and a lot that can be put into practice. What what um can you are you able to share the slide deck? in the um, stage chat. Yes, I'll share I'll share the slide deck and uh, sure. for everybody to, to consume. Okay, fantastic, thanks. Then also Kong, are you part of the, do you guys have um, the, uh, some, are you in the partner village? I'm not really sure, but okay. perhaps we are. Uh, it's not an information that I'm aware of, unfortunately. No worries. I mean, I know that you're, uh, normally Kong's quite, um, involved with API days and participating in a number of levels. So um, check out uh, for our audience, check out the um, uh, Partners Village either now before we go to the final wrap-ups for this afternoon um, or otherwise uh, check them out over tomorrow while we're here. Marco, fantastic talk. Thanks very much.